In this video, we're going to look a little bit into how to use R to uh, manipulate some data and produce a time series forecast and hopefully plot a time series forecast. So that is the goal. Now, what we do need to do is have a number of packages for uh, sort of data cleaning, time series forecasting. These are some packages that we're going to need to use. The first is called read Excel. <clears throat> and you can see that I have it um, highlighted here in my R script. Read Excel is going to allow us to read an Excel file into R. So truth in advertising. T Sybil is a package that allows us to produce R graphics and R forecasts with R auto recognizing R data as a time series. So that's highly desirable. The zoo package is very versatile and is a base for a number of other packages. You can see a description of it actually here in my packages where zoo it um, provides some infrastructure for time series. Now dplyr R and tidy R, these are two packages. The tidy R is a way to fix data sets and dplyr R is another um, data set that's used to assist with data manipulation. So a number of functions that we're going to use to transform our data set come from these two packages. Uh, the forecast package is a package for making forecasts. The fable package is a forecasting models for tidy time series packages, so it's, it, it produces some more models. Uh, ggplot2 produces graphs. magridr is a way of piping a function left to right in R, which is a useful programming tool. FPP3 produces all the data sets from the forecasting textbook that we're going to use. And the feasts packages um, will also produce some statistics for time series. So all of these packages that I have seen from lines 2 through 12 you should install on your own R Studio, and you install it using the install.packages and you can see as we scroll through here it just takes one line, you put the name of the package in quotation marks, you separate each package by a comma, R will or I'm sorry, our studio will download the package from a CRAN mirror online and will install automatically. So all of these packages have been installed already. If I were to run the code, for example, um, it would tell me that all the packages have been installed. Ignore the warning messages um, on your own computer. Uh, what, what you should do is make sure that you have the latest version of our studio you can get that that will be advisable. Okay, so let's say we've done this, and we just want to make some uh, forecasts, or maybe even do kind of some inner, inner time period forecasting for uh, Delta stock. So I go online, and I say I want Delta stock price data. I type it into Google, and I see what comes up. And you can see here's a time series graph of Delta for the last year. And as you can see, Delta has been massively impacted by COVID-19, their stock price in uh, at the start of the year, it was 59.04, and their stock price today is about half of that, 29.65. So they've lost about 50% of their uh, market capitalization since the start of the year, which is less than ideal, but that's kind of a story of the airline industry right now. So at any rate, we have this data, and it's not available here, but it is often available on Yahoo Finance. So we go to Yahoo Finance, and we just click on the website. It's going to load and you can see that the first thing it loads is historical data and so that data is, is listed here, that's the frequency and so I can just download this data and save it, you can see I'm downloading dal.csv okay so I'm going to save it, hit OK it shows up in my downloads, maybe I want to just examine the data a little bit and see what it looks like, so I have the, del the, the delta data here and I'm just going to open it up right here in Excel. Uh, you can see the data are a CSV. What I want us to hone in on is we've already used the read.csv 
uh, function to import a CSV into R, but we can also think of importing an Excel file into R. And so often you'll be given data as an Excel file, we can import it into R. And so what you can do here is you can see the opening price of the stock, the high, the low, the close, the adjusted closing price, and the volume for the particular stock. So um, the first row of this column is the labels that we would want. So we are, we are in business to go. I do want to point out that we have seven total columns in our data set. So six of them are numeric, but the first is a date. And so we're going to look at that accordingly. But let's go back to R. And once you have the read Excel package, let's call it Delta Stock. Delta Stock. And I'm going to create a data set from this Excel file with the read, dot Excel, read underscore Excel function. So read underscore Excel, as it says, it reads dot XLS and dot XLSX files. And the first thing is the path, okay? So the path is where your file is to be read from R. So as you go to, you know, I downloaded it and it is in my uh, downloads, okay? You can see, yeah, I'm going back up through my downloads. Here it is. You just copy it over and I'm going to put it in on my home, which is where I use R. So I want to put the file in the appropriate working directory for R and I'm going to, and I, I'm actually going to save it. Let's save it as a .xls. So I'm going to save it as delta dot um, xlsx, and then I'll put it where I want it. So I'm going to put it um, right right in the home. And so when we go back to the to the home screen, you can see the delta dot xlsx. Okay, and I go back to R Studio and I just type in read underscore Excel in quotation marks, I put delta dot XLSX, XLSX. Okay. Now, column names. True. That means the first row has column names. Very doable. Column types. We are going to concatenate together the column types. So the first one was a date and the rest are numeric. So date first, then numeric uh, numeric separate with a comma but put numeric in quotation marks if you put the comma inside the quotation marks R will interpret that as part of the string that's out of bounds we don't want that so comma outside the quotation marks and that's all we need so let's go ahead and run it and see what shows up we run it and here's Delta stock you can see R read it as a date, and it produced all the variables that are in our data set, but now they're in an R data frame. So I want to manipulate this in some way. Let's call it Delta Stock 1. And we are going to pipe the Delta Stock uh, data set. We're going to uh, use a number of functions to manipulate the columns a little bit to get them into a desired format. So um, let's take another look at the Delta stock data set. And you can see there are some gaps in the time series. Those gaps you would think could be handled easily by R, but once R interprets our data as being uh, a time series object, R knows that we're missing some data, and so R has some questions associated with that missing data when applying functions forecasting to it. And so what we would like to do is tell R that you don't need to worry about the fact that there are missing data because the stock market is closed on the weekends, um, but once R interprets this date as daily data, it says, well, there's no data on uh, November the 2nd, nor is there data on November the 3rd, so I can't apply the forecasting method because I'm missing the data required to do it. And so what we have to kind of do in these circumstances is work around it a little bit by 
defining an object to be daily, but to also be continuous in that time period. And that's what we're going to do here. So uh, for this delta of the stock, the first thing that we're going to do is let R know that the date in our data set is in fact a date. So, I, and I want to point out that we're going to use what's called the Lubridate library, and this is actually something that you also need to put in. So I have already downloaded it, but you're going to need it. So all the function, all the libraries that you see here in lines two through 13, you're going to need. But this year, month, date is for the date, is for the date in our data set. Okay. Now, we're going to arrange the date, the arrange function. And let's open this up a bit. The arrange function, it arranges the data from uh, oldest to newest. So that's going to be useful because what I want to do is assign an identification where the oldest data is the first observation and the, the newest data is the last observation. Okay, so now I'm going to use mutate again. Now mutate is a function that manipulates columns. So the first thing I've done, R read this in as a date, but I actually want it to be read as a year month date. So there's a difference between the two and we're reading it in first as a date to get the data into R, but then once the data are in R, I want R to interpret it in a very specific way as daily data. And so what we're going to do is we're going to call the ID, we're going to create a new variable called ID, and that's going to be equal to the row underscore number, and all it does is, is, is use the row number. Okay, and so you can you can see here that all it does is use the row number. Okay, we're gonna use mutate again. We're gonna create a new variable called naive. This is the naive forecast. It's gonna be equal to the lag of the closing variable one period behind. Okay, so We're going to create another variable called the, let's call it the two period average, average two. That's going to be equal to the lag of the closing variable, one period, plus the lag of the closing variable, two period, divided, divided by two. So put that in parentheses because otherwise you'll just be dividing the second part by two. Okay, so what have we done so far? We've used the mutate function as something that is available in R for us to manipulate columns. Manipulating columns is a key skill of data management. So you'll be adding variables, you'll be subtracting variables, you'll be multiplying variables. You will change the format of a variable from a character to a string, from a number to a date, from a number to a character. There are all kinds of things that you have to do to variables in R before you ever estimate a model or produce a forecast. And right now what we're doing is we're creating the nuts and bolts of some things that we need to do to have a forecast in R. Okay, I also want to create what's called naive error. Let's see if we can And that's going to be the closing price minus the naive forecast. And I'm going to create average error, which is equal to the closing price minus the two period average. Finally, in the piping, you can see that if I don't use the piping uh, to, to have one function to the entire data set, then if I hit enter, I'll go back to the far left and I'll no longer have something associated with the data set. So the last thing I want to do is have the whole point of creating the ID variable was to get around this problem where R was interpreting my dates in a very specific manner that was undesirable to me. Uh, 
where it was a continuous time series that was missing values. So I want to instead use this as t civil function and the index associated with the function describes the periodicity. So index is a bare or unquoted variable to specify the time index variable. We are not going to use the date because it is a year month date format and R will treat the missing dates in our data set as missing values. We don't want that, so we're going to use our ID instead. Okay, and, and, and we hit enter. So let, let's, let's see what, what turns up here. Let's run delta stock one. You can see now that we have 12 variables. Okay, so I have the naive model, I have the average, and then I also have naive error, average error, etc. And so I, I have uh, a fair amount of information in my data set. So I, I've generated the ID, a naive, an average, a naive error, an average error. All of these things are things that I did by hand. There are some built-in functions to do the naive model and the average model in R. There's an average function that will produce a forecast. Once you get to the end of the data set, it will produce a forecast for subsequent periods. Same thing for the naive model. Right now what I'm doing is I'm just producing the forecasts within, within period just to kind of examine how it would go one period ahead. Okay, so it's useful at this point to comment some of our formulas. So the read Excel is a function that um, reads .xls or .xlsx files into R and column names is a function that lets us know whether the first row contains headers. And column types allows us to manually tell R what type of data each column is. Here. Mutate manipulates columns. We created five variables. The lag function tells us to refer to the previous variable, or sorry, to the previous observation for a particular variable. This is an extremely useful type of activity. So the lag function is something you're going to use over and over again in your career as a data analyst because the data will often be structured in a way that uh, adjacent observations are related to each other. And in such instances, you may want to create a variable that incorporates values that are stacked on top of each other and the lag function is a way to refer to those values. One for the lag refers to one row above, two to two rows above, etc. And so you might think that for the average function, if we wanted to do an n period moving average, we might want to do something like set n in advance and then use a for loop to um, add all the call, add all the call, or uh, sorry, add all the rows. Um, within the context of a loop rather than just reproducing the same thing over and over again if we're going to do the same task a bunch. The row number is a generic function that tells R to refer to the row number. A range puts the data in order from uh, small to large or from oldest to newest, small to large, etc. Okay, lots of information being contained here. Uh, let's say we wanted to graph it. We have a couple of ways that we could graph it. Let's take a look at um, 
the first way, let, what if I want all of the data on, on one chart? I have to manually do it using um, ggplot. Uh, and there, there are a few ways that I could look at doing it, but what we're going to do first is um, create a subset of the variables. So let's call it delta set. And we're just going to refer to the delta stock one data set that we just made. And let's say I just wanted to plot the naive, the average, and the closing price together. That's it. That's all I want. So I select the ID, the closing price, the naive, and the average two. I gather them together. So the key is equal to the variable. And the value is equal to the value. And then the key, if you think of the key, um, That is a description of the time series objects that we have in here. And the ID is uh, just a way of indexing those observations. So we're going to get rid of it. We don't want to treat the ID as a variable. All right. So what we're doing with this function is we're, we're picking four variables out of the data set with the select. And the key is going to be the variable, the value is the value of those variables. And I don't want it to, to graph the ID because the ID is just telling me when the data occurred. It's not data itself. It's a description of time. So I'm going to get that out of the gather, but then it's still part of the set of variables that I selected. It's just not part of this grouping, this subset of variables. So what I want to do after that is plot these. I'm going to use ggplot. That's a plot function coming out of the gg2 package. The data I'm going to use is the delta set and the axes. AES is something for axis. So x is the ID. Y is the value. And that's included here. So this this first part of the ggplot wants to know what are you using for your x-axis and what are you using for your y-axis. So how are the data scaled? And so you think of the x-axis as being time and the y-axis as being the value of the closing price and the naive forecast and the average forecast. Okay, so this is describing the coordinate plane. Now we're going to add in our data. We're going to take a geometric line, geom line, also add a ggplot2, and AES, the color is equal to the variable. And the size is equal to 1, so small size. And let's just make sure that we have it um, as detailed as, as we as we need to. We'll look at my previous code here. Okay, so we have it in here. Let's create the delta set first. That's going to show up over here in 762 observations of three variables. So you can see we've, we've kind of reorganized our data into um, ID variable value. So we've um, sort of deconstructed our data set. 
and we've extracted the value as its own column, and now the variable is like an identifier rather than its own, own column. And now we're just going to plot it. So let's run it. You can see delta stock price. The blue is the naive, the green is the data, the red is the moving average, and so you can see um, they're all very, very similar to each other. This shouldn't really be a surprise that any of these models are, are pretty good at predicting daily data. You would sort of hope that they would be. Um, but I do want to describe the data a little bit. Select picks columns out of our data set. And let's just say that the select select is a is a core R function. Gather gather is a way to group variables, and it converts uh, variables into um, like one set of categories indexed by the variable. ggplot is a function we can use to plot um, different variables. Uh, it's not the only plot, that, it's not the only thing that we can use. So um, I could go right back to, to delta, um, delta 1 delta stock one, let me do that right here, and go, just open that up really quick, delta stock one, that's right here, uh, I can pipe it right to the auto plot, and I can just pick some variables that I want, auto plot is a function that I can use to um, plot variables, and I could get an individual graph of each of these. Do that right here. Note that I can export this as an image or as a PDF. I can change the name of the axes if I need to. So got plenty of options here. This is a very crude graph. Um, but let's run it. So ours running that right now, and you can see the close versus the naive versus the average models. So all very similar. You can see there's a little bit less volatility in the average model. That's kind of the point. This is a way of just examining how R can very quickly help us make forecasts. Um, we could also plot the errors. So, um, you know, if I go back to Delta stock uh, one, and plot just with auto plot. I I use uh, naive error. Let's run it. Get a look at the errors here. Error examination is a key way to examine the quality of the forecast. You can see the errors sort of look like a random walk here. That's a good thing. Um, so it's not clear that the naive or the uh, moving average model, or it's not clear that the naive model is that bad. There's not a systematic pattern in the errors. That's just a description of them here. We could plot the moving average error. You would think that would look very similar. We'll just go back to the, to the console, actually. Plot it right there. See the average errors look kind of similar to the uh, the naive. You can x out of it. You see it removed two paths rows containing missing values. It's just a comment. So just as a summary, this is just getting started with doing some time series forecasting in R. And you have to read the data in. You have to manipulate it a little bit, and you can make some basic forecasts and uh, graph 
your forecasts graph your errors pretty smoothly.